This is Brooke Drum with PrinterBot, PrinterBot.com, and we're putting together the PrinterBot, the original plastic version, and we have arrived at the extruder. Now, um, gentleman's been nice enough, Alex, I believe his name is, uh, to do this assembly drawing, so I've laid it out um, just like this drawing. Uh, if all goes well, we'll be including these, uh, but this will be available online, so count on it being online. So uh, we're just going to run through. Now I've done a little bit of prep prep work here. I've already inserted the screw here. Key thing about this is drop this guy in. Do not over tighten. Um, when, you're, when you get it in there and it breaches, you can see it through here. Back it off so you can get it on the motor easily. Recommend you flat your motors with a file. That's going to be waiting when we're ready to adjust exactly where that needs to go. We'll finger tighten, and then we'll go just like an eighth of a turn more. Um, you will be able to over tighten this and break this whole thing, so be very careful with that, okay? All right, so here's our extruder, and it goes together like this. The hob bolt right through there. You may have to clean that up a little bit so it goes through nice and easy. We just printed, I just printed this gear. Okay, in good shape there. And then uh, one washer, as it shows in the drawing, but I happen to know, um, well, we'll see once I get it on there. We might need two, depending on where the hob lands. So uh, I'm going to put this on. Goes right in there. You can see I've already cleaned up these holes. Uh, important to drill these out. And uh, these I drilled out first from this side, going back and forth like that, because they're oblong holes. And then I cleaned it with a knife, so that'll be useful. The other bearing goes in over here. And uh, after you get that done, pretty much ready to slap this on. Now, oh, here's where I'll check. Oh, that's good. So that worked well. Oops, with one. Uh, then you, with one washer on the inside, one on the outside. You want this to move pretty good. So that's good. You could leave it just like that. And to tighten these guys, you hold the bottom and you just give it a little snug. All right. Now another alternative to the to the jam nut, two nuts, jam it against each other to hold tight. Is this is optional. This is a kind of a nice addition. This is nylock which has a little piece of plastic on the end there makes it impossible to turn by hand and also impossible to I mean it just doesn't get loose so I tighten it down all the way too tight I'll back it off a little bit works good so either way now this guy little dowel goes through here and I keep hitting my camera I like to get that centered, and it should seat right down in there. This should spin. Not super good, but it does. And then the way that we do this, by the way, there was a little um, piece on here that you'll want to snap off. It's a little block. I don't know where it went. Um, it's support. When that prints flat, it needs a little support, so there's a little block. You'll just remove that and clean it up. A one inch screw. I guess I can use this. But I don't want to over tighten with this. So I stop short. See how I stop short there? And just get this snug. So that's good. See what happens is. Um, oh look, now that I've got this tight, I see that that is off. I thought this was one of those bolts. Some of my earlier ones required two washers, so this is offset, so I'm going to fix that 
by releasing this. And all I'm going to do is add a little spacer on this side. So then I got two washers over there. I'll go ahead and use my nylock. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, drop my <laughs> wrench. You don't want it like spinning so freely like that. You want it nice and snug because this bearing, you know, you want it to ride true all the time. So what I like to do with these is over tighten it a little bit to get everything snug and then I back it off. So now it's aligned with the side there. And it's washers are funny. They have they come in different thicknesses and they're not, you know, really exacting standards. So you might play with the washers in there. You really want to get that dialed in. I'm not totally happy. Let me tighten it a little bit more. So that's as the filament goes through here, it's gonna seat rather well, but it's like half a millimeter off by my standards. So I'd want to find a washer that's just slightly I'd like to move that over a little bit, but you can kind of see how that works. Now, once you get that, um, I'll show you this. So the hex nuts go down on the top, and you do want those to go straight down, not catty corner, not the wrong way. You want the flat sides to go down so the point is down. There we go. Sometimes they're really loose, sometimes they're, and it's okay if they're loose in there, because that, there we go, kind of snaps down. Now these are, I, I brought the wrong screw, screws just to put it, all you guys at rest. The um, This is a countersink screw, I don't know why. Not, I think most of the kid, kids have a regular flat button head. And you know, there's optionally, you could add a washer on one of these sides, but there's really no need. And these springs are choice springs, piano wire compression compression springs. These are high dollar springs. This is a buck a piece. Let me just save some time. Now see, it's going to catch that. There we go. Ooh, that was way too tight. So what happens is use these screws to uh, there's a lot of tension on this now and uh, what that does is presses the filament the filament goes down through here you loosen these free it up poke the filament down and then these provide a push a pinch roller there so that it forces the filament into the teeth so when this turns it's really going to be uh, very very tightly held it's a little tight Let's have to move a little easier there we go all right now for the motor now this is um, I was wondering if these are going to be long enough so let me test this here That was perfect. So eight millimeter is fine. You don't want to go too long because these actually, the taps in this actually bottom out. So you don't want to overdo on that. Sometimes I run these with two. Two screws and I'll show you where the third one goes. But I take these apart so much. I've been switching out motors, testing all kinds of stuff. So sometimes I use. Now, while those are loose, what you can do is use one as a pivot point and see how I was able to move that. So you can get it tight. You don't want to like go crazy getting everything all tight because it actually creates friction and stresses your motor. It's okay to have a little slop in here. That, now the reason that stops. I haven't tightened this yet. And it's really tight tolerance in there. Let's see if that does it. Ooh. Still, it's still rubbing a little bit. With that rub, 
I didn't clean that off real well. I love it when I'm in tutorial videos and I find problems because it actually this is what's going to happen <laughs> with some of you. So dodging that out a little bit. Now we're good. Now there's it's very tight, but uh, now it doesn't bind. Okay.